Hey guys, shave for today. Same gear as usual this August. The timeless open comb, 68 gap stainless steel razor. Still got the blade in it from yesterday. I loosened it up, rinsed it out. Show you that to you in a minute. It's the Gillette Nasset. The B35 from Zenith is a bore brush, kind of chubby scrubby kind of ratio in terms of the width of the knot versus the length. But there's just so much there, it's a big brush that it's actually a not feeling very scrubby to me uh, as the tips have a good bit of flex to them. Especially as it ages, it's gonna get even better. Uh, the Nasset blade has 511 uses on it so far. So today is 512. Chisel Face Midnight Stag is the soap, splash, and fragrance for today's shave and indeed the whole month. The Ring of Death keeps getting bigger. Yesterday, I probably used about four or five shaves worth of soap in trying out Greg's method. And it was my mistake for loading too much. It, um, uh, he said 10 seconds is what he has been loading with, with his Sapona Fisio Veracino, but his brush is just damp and not wet. So it doesn't leave a lot of moisture on the soap right? Well, what I've been using this soap for lately, you can see by the glisten, is a method that uses a wet brush to come at it. And so therefore, even though I reduced it down to seven seconds of loading instead of 10, it still picked up way too much soap. And that affected the rest of the shave uh, in, in, in making it different than how Greg's work out. But it was a neat, uh, uh, it was a neat experience. I might try it later on this month. And, uh, and he, he's able to do it fairly, fairly fast. It's, uh, uh, he, he uses the suds after the loading to work his face as a pre-shave and adds water to that to get kind of some nice slick stuff on your face from the start. And then works up something thick on his cheeks and then uh, uh, paints water in there, dipping the tips of the brush in a cup and then bringing water to the face like that and adding the water to the, to the lather like that. And then he doesn't fully combine that the stuff in the core of the knot, um, not at least right away. And so that helps him to have more lather at the end of the shave. And so there's some good points to his uh, method. Go back and look at that video if you, if you want. Today, I'm gonna see, can I do a two swirl shave? When I first started with this soap at the beginning of the month, I think it needed a 15, 18 second load because the soap was dry. With this very wet brush coming at it every day, it of course leaves behind moisture and it makes it easier for the brush to pick up the soap. And so I've had to ramp down my load time to where I don't even count seconds anymore, I'm counting swirls kind of like what happened a few years ago when I did uh, MDC as my soap. Same thing happened there. I had to switch down to counting swirls. And I, uh, I can't remember. All right, so let me get my, uh, let's show you the blade so I don't forget to do that. I gave it a good rinse and so I didn't really remove it from the razor just so you can kind of see it's, Identifying marks. And I am, one of the things I'm doing with this blade is just being very cautious about what touches the edge. Very cautious about that. Not only from the standpoint of uh, being cut myself, but from the standpoint of protecting the edge. I don't know if it's necessary but that's what I'm doing. Get my face wet. Now I'm not thinking that two swirls is gonna give me tons of lather, okay? Uh, I've done three swirls and it was starting to look like maybe four, four passes of lather is kind of what I'm comfortably gonna get from three swirls, but it was definitely starting to look like I need to, to just watch out with the lather at that point um, so it doesn't get wasted um, because you're definitely starting getting close to the line on that. So um, I'm not expecting this to be an amazing shave. 
might be a little skimpy, but it's fun to push the limits and find out where that line is and when it does actually uh, start to get skimpy. So uh, the I did shake a lot of the water out, but you can still feel it's kind of heavy. If I, if I shook harder, you'd see some drops. So it's definitely a wet brush. Is it very wet? Mm, some people might call it very wet. Oh, look, see, look, I even got some drips when I turned it that way. So yeah, I'd say it's probably a, a very wet brush. So um, ring of death, now that also could affect things. If, it, if it's, uh, because there's not as much, there's not any soap in the middle part. And so that can mean longer load times by just a little bit. All right, so two swirls. One, two, and that's it. Did that pick up enough? We will see. So I'm going to go right to my face. You can see the suds start to kind of build a little bit, and, and some of them are even dripping off. Maybe I should have shaken out my brush a bit more, but we'll see. That water... That extra water in the knot might really come in handy later on in the in the shave. Now I'm not going to work this too much since, after all, I am dealing with just two two swirls of, of soap, and I'm fully confident that what's on my face right now is very slick. Yep. So I don't really necessarily need to keep adding more soap to it. So this will be very interesting to see. Just a tiny bit of tug in the first pass is kind of typical and has been typical with this blade for quite a while now, but it's not painful at all. It's, it's not even uncomfortable as long as I shave within 24 hours. It gets a little more tuggy if I go farther than that. And that's it. Let's do a quick rinse. Not even a rinse. Just applying water. Kind of get the stubble away. Now, let's see what happens on this second pass. I'm going to start light at first. Does it, uh, does it ever come together as a mature lather on the brush like the longer load times do? Or am I taking away from the brush with even this amount? Am I taking too much soap away? We'll see. Cross grain now. If you know somebody with a really strong microscope, an organization, something like that, let me know. My friend Greg, he has offered to, he's got a pretty strong microscope. I think it goes down to a thousand times or 900 times. And judging from the photos he's getting, and showing from his his blades and the, uh, his straight razors and things like that, I think he's going to be able to get some good information regarding this NASIT. But you know, some university with some multi-thousand-dollar microscope is probably going to be better, right? I contacted a couple of universities about um, one local and then MIT because they did a shaving blade, you know, razor story uh, article that a lot of us shavers know about uh, about what makes um, what causes the chipping in the blades you know why do razor blades go dull and I think it was from the standpoint of let's let's help to develop the right metal so that we can maybe get these things to go farther or something like that contacted them and they did get back with me eventually and said that they weren't interested in looking at the NASA 
I'm sure they've moved on to other projects. I contacted a local university I'm here in the Carolinas, and they kind of a science and technology kind of university. And so they also did not have any interest, and that's all right. I understand that. I kind of didn't expect anybody to. But if you know of an organization or something, the good news is that Greg, I think, is going to be able to get some good scans of the edge and... Uh, Tell us, educate us as to what the edge looks like these days. After I think after austere August, you know, I will uh, maybe send it to him. And there we go. That's three passes right there. Face feels slick. Uh, so not, my lather didn't feel skimpy. Lather never felt, uh, yeah, it didn't really look luxurious and creamy, but that's all right. And what do I have left here in the brush? With <laughs> just two swirls in the tub. And it wasn't even a full tub. It's a tub with the circle of death. And then I've done three passes. And then here is a luxurious fourth pass of lather. Easily. So, <laughs> two swirls. How about that? How about that? Now, I think if I would have... Work the lather a little bit longer on that second pass. Sometimes I get, I go for a little more mature lather on that second pass. Then maybe I wouldn't have had as much left over for the third, you know, who knows. But I bet I still could have done the squeeze and used that lather anyway. <laughs> you know what that means. I think tomorrow I'm going to have to try one swirl. <laughs> That's just crazy. All right. I mean, it is a bore brush, okay? Bore brushes are... Uh, more, uh, more, more, more backbony and kind of stiff, but you can, you can see, I mean, look how easily it bends over. And so it's not really super stiff or especially around the tips. And then we've got badgers, of course, that, you know, have uh, a little, a little less backbone sometimes. This is a high mountain white, so it's actually uh, got a little bit of backbone itself. Um, but uh, but boars are known for having that backbone and especially this one a lot of guys claim that it's a soap eater But as you can see, it's not eating my soap. I just I just lowered my my load times And so it's only a soap eater if you just load recklessly and if you're an overloader anyway And then you fail to compensate for that uh, For that fact. So I think the, the, the lather eater the soap eater status of this brush is is a fallacy it's unsubstantiated and kind of unfair there we have it and we're now ready for the aftershave this is an older bottle but even so he still was back then making and adding some skin food like witch hazel and uh, and that kind of stuff to his aftershave. It does have menthol, which I don't enjoy, but I've kind of gotten used to it, um, especially with this with this uh, uh, aftershave. I, I would definitely buy some if he made some without the menthol. And then to bring the smokiness around. This awesome scent as a fragrance. Chisel Face Midnight Stag. And that is the 512th shave with the Nasset. Two swirls. Go figure. Well, there we go. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Thanks so much for watching. A, uh, another austere August shave where we are... Uh, keeping with the same gear for the purposes of learning more about the soap itself or the lathering methods, trying different techniques because we're eliminating variables. And so that's what we often choose to do during the austere August time frame. And I love the Midnight Stag, Stephen of Dogwood Handcrafts. It's his favorite scent. He established a challenge years ago during this to have people use this 
deplorable and divisive scent during this month. And that's just kind of become a tradition for me, even though he has kind of stopped doing uh, prizes like he used to, that sort of thing. All right. Uh, he has become an evangelist of Midnight Stag, and it has worked. There are some of us who keep going, even though um, there aren't really uh, any prizes. So you guys take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. All the best to you. Good night.